We start in Yemen, where Houthi rebels have promised retaliation for US and British airstrikes, which Houthis say killed at least five people. The strikes prompted tens of thousands to protest in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a. Iran, which backs the Houthis, has also condemned the strikes. The incident is increasing fears that the war between Israel and Hamas could expand into a wider regional conflict. The US and UK said the strikes against targets across Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen were to protect international trade routes from Houthi attacks. In recent weeks, Houthi rebels have launched more than a dozen drone and missile strikes on Red Sea shipping. One by one, American military aircraft take off. Part of a coordinated strike back against Yemen's Houthi rebels in retaliation for attacks on shipping in the Red Sea. Led by the US and Britain in a mission described as an act of self-defense to restore stability along the important trade route. The UK military has released these images of its airstrikes. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, who is currently visiting Ukraine, said the strikes were necessary, proportionate and targeted. Well, over the last month, we've seen a significant increase in the number of Houthi attacks on commercial shipping in the Red Sea. That's putting innocent lives at risk. It's disrupting the global economy uh, and it's also uh, destabilising the region. Uh, and in that time, we've also seen the single biggest attack on a Navy warship, a British Navy warship that we've seen in decades. Now, it's clear that that type of behaviour can't carry on. That U.S. officials say more than a dozen sites were attacked, including command centres and munitions depots used by the Houthi group. With Houthi television broadcasting video claiming to show explosions and the apparent aftermath of the strikes. The American and British enemies bear full responsibility for their criminal aggression against our Yemeni people. It will not go unpunished or unanswered. The Yemeni armed forces will not hesitate to target threatening sources and all hostile targets on land and sea in order to defend Yemen, its sovereignty and independence. Houthi rebels, who are backed by Iran, have been targeting ships in the Red Sea for weeks, with the group releasing this footage in November of its fighters appearing to seize a vessel. It claims the attacks are in response to Israel's war in Gaza against Hamas, whom the US, EU and other countries have labelled a terrorist organisation. The big question now is what this could mean for the war in Gaza and the wider region, with the world bracing for a response from the Houthis and those who support them. Well, let's look at some of those questions with Elizabeth Kendall, who is a Middle Easter expert from Cambridge University. Welcome to DW. Let's start local and zoom out if we can. Um, we'll start with the Red Sea. The, the, what does this escalation mean for this area, one of the busy, busiest shipping channels uh, in the world? Well, of course, the idea behind the strikes by the United States and the UK is to try to disengage the Houthis from wreaking havoc in the Red Sea. So the whole point is to try to tamp down the conflict there and to ease the burden uh, of fear on the shipping industry and therefore the knock-on effects that that has on our economies. The problem now is that the actual effect it may have on the region is to make things even worse. And the reason I say that is that the Houthis are no strangers to airstrikes. They have been in a civil war in Yemen now for nine years. They've suffered more than 25,000 airstrikes by the Saudi-led coalition, and it didn't deter them. So I think, looking ahead, we might stand to see even more conflict start to erupt in this Red Sea region. OK. The Houthis say they're launching these attacks for the sake of Hamas in its war against Israel. Should we take that claim at face value? I think that claim could be taken in two ways. I don't think we can dismiss it entirely as not being genuine. I think the Houthis 
as are many people around the Arab world, are genuinely concerned about the plight of the Palestinians and feel that they want to stick up for them in a way that other governments, other regimes in the region probably can't speak out. And however, it's absolutely the case that this works very well for them politically and that they are able to exploit the situation in an opportunistic way to try to gain more support for themselves inside Yemen and indeed more broadly. So it works at both those levels at the same time. Right. Let's go back then to this this uh, this notion that you say it looks like uh, this uh, Operation Pros Prosperity Guardian hasn't worked, may indeed uh, backfire. Because I wonder about the calculation for commanders uh, in, in charge of, of this operation. How hard they must be looking at? Well, how hard can we hit them without the whole region going up in flames? That's going to be extremely difficult to understand. Now. It didn't look like there were many options left on the table. Most things had been tried, sanctions against the Houthis, curbing their flow of funds, some diplomatic efforts, but without much leverage over the Houthis, those weren't really going to work. And then, of course, the threat of having the multinational maritime force in the region. None of that was enough to deter them. And so we've now moved to this much more direct military action. Finding that line, however, is going to be really difficult because being at war in the Red Sea is one thing. Sea is one thing. Land, taking this fight now to Yemen, to a land-based airstrike situation, that really could inflame the region. And the Houthis, for sure, will be milking this for all that they have. It plays into their narratives of being the victim of the US and its allies being aggressive towards Arab and Muslim states. That's right. exactly how they wanted to pitch it. Just a, a, a quick final uh, a thought on whether the Houthis could just wait this out, because the US has shown itself now to be disinclined uh, to become too deeply involved in foreign uh, adventures. The Houthis could just absorb this, America gets, gets bored or distracted, it's got an election on the way, and then the Houthis are still there and maybe even a change of, of policy at the White House. This is precisely the dilemma here because it is an unequal war. On the one hand, we have the US and allies who do not want to get bogged down in a war and who are very sensitive to casualties. And on the other, we have the Houthis who are quite willing to take significant casualties, who seem quite comfortable with the discomfort of their populations, who have been at war now on and off in the region for almost 20 years, since 2004, in fact. And so they're hardened, they're used to this. And really, if you're around the age of 20, 22, inside Yemen, all you've known, apart from one or two years, is, is going war. to be war. Right. So they have much more appetites to continue this than we do. And they can do a lot with very little resource. That's very clear. Thank you so much for talking us through that. Elizabeth Kendall from Cambridge University. You're welcome. Let's get into this with Ian Ralby, a non-resident senior fellow at the Center for Maritime Strategy. Welcome to DW News. I'd like to start by setting the stakes a little bit here. Can you tell us what this escalation means for the Red Sea, one of the busiest shipping channels in the world? Yeah, unfortunately, this is exactly what the Houthis have been waiting for for about 10 years. And as a result, we have to be concerned about how they're going to lash out further at shipping. Uh, for the last two months, they have been very consistent in attacking global maritime commerce, which is really an assault on all of us because we are all dependent on the free flow of goods all over the world. And no matter where it is, it's going to affect our supply chains. And the Red Sea is a critical choke point. Uh, and so they've been doing a very good job of, of making global commerce more difficult. Uh, but this is likely to increase the challenge. They have long held the narrative that the war in Yemen was actually about fighting the US and the UK. And now that they have actually experienced uh, the force of the US and the UK, uh, they are going to be able to embolden themselves further uh, and probably reach out even further uh, because they now are finding all kinds of supporters that had been a bit tired of the long conflict, uh, but are now re-enlivened. So the fact that they've effectively moved from just being a local rebel group uh, backed by Iran to now being a very disruptive to shipping, it sounds like you think this, this strengthens the Houthis' hand. 
It very much does, unfortunately. They, uh, they've they been trying to sell everyone on a narrative for years uh, internally, and that narrative is spilling over into the wider region because for the first time, they've actually gotten everybody's attention. They had no real visibility for most of the time that they've been fighting against the government of Yemen. Uh, let's be very clear. These strikes were not against Yemen. They were against the Houthis, but the problem is it has given them the focus of the world. Uh, we are talking about them all over the world. They've been the source of uh, and focus of a UN Security Council meeting, a very high profile British cabinet office meeting. Um, they're getting the attention they've long dreamed of, and it is coming from the very sources that they wished to draw the attention of. And so we are uh, likely to see a, a wider effort at both recruiting uh, and expanding their mission to, to try to lash out at the West and, and further themselves. They are not interested in Palestine, except as so far as it gives them a reason to fight. They are very uh, <laughs> opportunistic mm. in how they've jumped on the Israel-Gaza situation for their own right. So even as this is boosting their, their profile internationally, uh, looking at the response we've seen so far from the U.S. and the U.K. and these strikes, which they say are aimed at protecting this crucial shipping uh, through the Red Sea, do you think that the strikes that we've already seen or more intense strikes could deter the Houthis con to con from continuing to uh, attack Red Sea shipping? Unfortunately, I, I don't. Um, I've been watching the Houthis for a long time, and they do not act like the rest of us. The Houthis uh, ha have a very particular uh, mindset. They have a particular mission. And unfortunately, we played into their hands. They're terrible playmates, and, and they're enjoying this play. They are uh, not going to respond to deterrence the way we see deterrence. They're not going to respond to force the way we would respond to force. And so what would perhaps make others think twice is only going to encourage them because they are really keen on promoting this narrative. For 10 years, they've been playing the game of fake it till you make it. Now they've made it because they've been talking about fighting the US and the UK for 10 years, and now they actually get the chance to. And so this is going to uh, really expand their possibilities for uh, not only recruiting internally, uh, but potentially trying to encourage others in, in the region and even far beyond uh, to be inspired by uh, what yeah, has more. been labeled a, a global protest. Uh, sorry, just one question but before I let you go. So if you think that deterrence is not mm -hmm. going to be helpful here, what would you advise Washington and London as they're looking at this issue? What choices do they have other than military force? Well, it, it is about what deterrence actually means. And unfortunately, the, these attacks were, were, were uh, if, if you were going to launch an attack, it needed to be uh, more forceful uh, than what we're seeing. And, and that, that uh, unfortunately leads us down a very dangerous path. What we need to look at is how to draw the Houthis' attention away from shipping, uh, because right now that is the, the principal concern, because every person on Earth is affected by it. And that needs to uh, to be done with with pretty intense diplomatic acumen, probably not by the U.S. and the U.K., but through partners uh, to draw the Houthi attention away and, and see if they can find a way. But we've now put ourselves in a very difficult position where uh, we're, we're likely to see a period of back and forth escalation un until someone uh, changes tactics. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. That's Ian Ralby with the Center for Maritime Strategy. We very much appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I spoke earlier with Guido Steinberg with the German Institute for International and Security Affairs, and I asked him whether these latest airstrikes were likely to stop the Houthis from attacking shipping in the Red Sea, given that it is not the first time the U.S. has intervened. Well, uh, yes, that's true. But a couple of years ago, uh, the United States did exactly the same, and uh, it did work. This time, though, uh, I think the situation uh, is different. Uh, the United States and other countries have warned the Houthis. They have presented an ultimatum uh, last week, and the Houthis went on attacking, uh, attacking civilian ships. I think that they will try their utmost uh, to keep up their attack attacks on uh, on the traffic uh, close to the Bab al Manda uh, hmm. Straits. And in response, how far do you then think the U.S. and the U.K. Uh, and possibly even more countries joining the coalition? How far would they be willing to go to try to prevent uh, further strikes from the Houthis? Well, uh, I think that the United States and Britain uh, and also some other countries will keep up uh, their airstrikes against the Houthis if the Houthis don't stop the attacks um, on, on, on traffic in the, in the Red Sea. Um, but uh, they do not have any more 
um, alternatives. Uh, the situation in Yemen is dangerous. Uh, the civil war has calmed down in the last two years, but the Houthis are always able to hit Saudi targets. Uh, and that has proved to be extremely dangerous in recent years. The Houthis have attacked uh, the capital, Riyadh. They have attacked oil installations. They have all also uh, attacked the United Arab Emirates. And there is the danger that any American uh, and British strikes on Yemen might provoke uh, a renewed outbreak of the civil war in Yemen and of the attacks uh, on Saudi Arabia and the UAE. And I don't think that this is uh, the, 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 the outcome that Washington wants. Indeed. Uh, tell us more about that uh, and where Saudi Arabia uh, stands in all of this, because it's, it's, of course, been trying to end both the conflict with the Houthis and also just reduce tensions with its regional rival, Iran, lately. Yes. Well, Saudi Arabia is in a, is in a difficult uh, situation. It has uh, tried uh, to exit the war in Yemen, Yemen ever since 2019, and it, it uh, has stopped virtually all of its uh, military activities in Yemen some one and a half, two years ago. It has entered into negotiations directly with uh, the Houthi movement. And the last thing Saudi Arabia wants is a renewal of fighting in Yemen and a renewal of the fighting with the Houthis. And that's part of the reason why Saudi Arabia did not join uh, this coalition of states um, in, in the Red Sea, trying to secure the, uh, the Red Sea. And that's quite, uh, quite interesting, simply because uh, it, it is in Saudi Arabia's interest uh, to secure uh, the sea lanes uh, up to the uh, to the Suez Canal. Absolutely, uh, very fascinating that Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia does not seem to want to get involved here. Um, also, this was, of course, an attack uh, against one of Iran's proxies, and I'm curious about their reaction because the first thing we've heard from Tehran is also a call for restraint rather than revenge. Um, does that also signal to you that Iran is planning to keep out of this? Yes, uh, Iran does not want a wider conflict, but at the same time, it wants to show the Israelis and their allies that they are able to exert influence in the region. And that's uh, the reason why uh, the Iranian client Hezbollah in Lebanon has attacked the Israelis uh, in the last three months, time and again. And that's the reason why the Houthis uh, keep attacking the sea lanes in the Red Sea. So Iran is the main responsible, uh, but it tries everything uh, to, de to deny its uh, responsibility for what is happening. The signal, though, the message, it is arriving uh, in the West, but especially in Saudi Arabia. Well, thank you so much for providing that regional perspective for us. That's uh, Guido Steinberg with the German Institute for International and Security Affairs. The military operation in Yemen was supported by Australia, Canada, the Netherlands, South Korea and Germany, amongst others. Here's German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock. The federal government backs this reaction politically. We have issued a statement in this regard together with our partners. The Houthis bear responsibility for their actions, the attacks on civilian shipping. They have to cease these attacks without delay. We as the EU are working urgently on contributing to the stabilization in the Red Sea and looking at contributions to the stabilization. This has to be decided within the EU framework. We are working on that urgently. Well, like the German Foreign Secretary, uh, Tobias Bachele is a member of the German Parliament for the Green Party. He also sits on the Parliament's uh, Committee on Foreign Affairs. Uh, welcome to DW. So we just heard Annalena Baerbock say the EU is looking for ways to contribute to the stabilisation uh, in the Red Sea. What is that likely to look like? Um, I assume that this is uh, mainly regarding, well, assuring the safety of uh, merchant uh, vessels. Uh, probably we're talking about uh, Marines uh, securing the passage. Um, I think that's the way to go for the European Union.
Right. So is that Germany's Bundeswehr, a German sailors, Germany's uh, Navy are uh, going out into the Red Sea, uh, ready to engage the Houthis in direct combat? Well, possibly, yes, um, I would uh, say so. But uh, of course, it means it's embedded in an in international um, um, uh, approach to uh, securing our merchant uh, or our old merchant vessels and their security. Um, and of course, if uh, the Houthis uh, decide to further attack um, civil, but also military targets uh, in the Red Sea or uh, somewhere around, uh, that would also mean that uh, if we participate, uh, that means we are we are uh, securing that, of course, also, if necessary, in a matter of uh, combat. Right. So this is the plan that, that you support. How far progressed is it? Um, honestly, I, I can't tell. Currently, we have no, no information yet. Uh, as you know, the Bundeswehr is a parliamentarian uh, army or so-called parliamentarian army, which means every time they are sent into any kind of mission, the parliament needs to discuss on it and um, yeah, agree on it. And uh, so far, we still are at the point on negotiations on European level, how a European mission could look like. And if we know further information about that, or if we have an agreement on European level, I um, expect an, an a proposal to come to the parliament um, and an expectation to come to the Bundeswehr or towards the Bundeswehr in Germany. And that's when we are going to discuss that. Um, but so far, we have no further information or, or anything as that this is currently under negotiation on European level. And what is it that you believe German uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen would potentially be fighting and dying for? What would their mission be? Well, protecting civil and merchant vessels. I think that's the key. And that's uh, the biggest problem with the attacks of the Houthis within uh, the last few weeks we, uh, that we have seen, that they decided to attack um, vessels that they believed were aligned with uh, Israel. And um, I mean, as uh, the the expert before, as Elizabeth Kendall just said, um, the Houthis are exploiting a political situation where they hope uh, to align with the with the with the uh, Palestinians. I don't believe they are doing anything in favor really for the Palestinian with that. Um, but above all, attacking civil and merchant uh, vessels can't be tolerated. And so uh, briefly, is Germany's Bundeswehr willing or even able? to engage in a direct conf confrontation with uh, Houthis in the Red Sea. It was only 2014 that uh, equipment shortages meant German soldiers were using broomsticks instead of heavy machine guns during a, a NATO military exercise. You actually have the wherewithal to do this. Um, first of all, yes. And second of all, to get one thing clear, um, I do hope that the Houthis will stop their attacks, um, not only if they see that the European Union is willing to protect their and other civil and merchant vessels um, so that it won't be necessary. But if it's necessary, if the Houthis um, decide to further attack uh, ships, whether it's uh, merchant vessels or Navy ships that we might be sending there, of course, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, our Bundeswehr is ready to, to combat that. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Tobias Bachheller, a Green member of uh, Germany's, uh, the German Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So let's dig into where Germany fits into all this and get some perspective from Germany's biggest opposition party. Uh, Johann Vadepul joins me now. He is a member of parliament for the conservative CDU party and a defense and foreign policy expert. Welcome uh, to DW News. We've just heard the German foreign minister there saying that the EU is looking for ways to contribute to the stabilization in the Red Sea. Can you give us a sense of what that could look like? Yes, good afternoon. I would like to say that that uh, we as opposition, we as Christian Democrats support absolutely uh, what uh, our foreign minister Annalena Baerbock just said. It is uh, very uh, good and, and necessary that Germany as a country 
belonging to NATO and European Union backs what United States, United Kingdom and other uh, of our, our allies did. Uh, it was necessary uh, to give that signal to the Houthis that they cannot go on with these strikes uh, onto the uh, uh, Red Sea to the Suez Canal that endangers our supply chains and that is, that is not acceptable anymore. So we politically absolutely uh, support this and uh, we as oppo opposition back our, our government uh, on, this, on this path. And of course, we as Germany always need an international framework to uh, legally uh, 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 make it possible for Germany to, to join uh, these military actions. And uh, we just, uh, as Annalena Baerbock said, we are trying to, to find a framework on the European level, and I hope that will be successful as soon as possible. So we are looking at a possible military response uh, from Germany with unity within uh, within Parliament between the coalition government and uh, your opposition CDU. Did I understand that correctly? Yes, absolutely. We would support that uh, if the government comes over to us and asks us, uh, asks uh, us for support. There will be, be political support. There will be the uh, support in in our Parliament. We do have uh, units, Navy units uh, in the region. Uh, the German Navy is able uh, to support uh, uh, these military strikes and also uh, with, with other military means. Germany is politically uh, uh, ready to, to, to support our allies because uh, if we want to want to stop an escalation there, there has been a clear, political and also military signal to the Houthis that they cannot go on. And this is also a political sign to Iran in order to stop uh, the Houthis because they are, uh, they are the ones who are behind the Houthis, not only militarily, but also politically. So, so that is very necessary in, 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 in these uh, times. Uh, now, uh, if, if I may just jump in, sure, if, if uh, Germany the, is, is yes. willing to commit these naval units and perhaps other forms of military action, does that not have the potential to drag mm -hmm. Germany here into a much wider regional conflict with, with Iran, for example, which you've just said are uh, strong backers of the Houthis? I think it's just the other way around because uh, it, it's a similar situation to the situation uh, in Ukraine. Um, uh, if you if you uh, do not uh, signal very clear uh, to the ones who start uh, violating uh, international law, if you do not uh, give uh, the show them the clear will to deter them and to defend the international law. They will go on. Putin does it, and the Houthis uh, and Iran will also do so if we don't signal them very clearly that they they will uh, get get a clear message from our side. And the West, the European Union, NATO, has uh, always to be united. And Germany, as a central uh, country in Europe and as a, as an important member of of NATO and European Union. Uh, has to join the uh, the alliance uh, there in, in in order to to stop uh, an escalation. Uh, so so the clear signal and the readiness uh, to 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 join the others will will uh, stop an escalation. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us today on DW News. That is Johann Vadopol, a member of the German Parliament for the Conservative Pleasure. Opposition. Many thanks.